All right, all right. Hey, how you doing, 10Xers? Let's get into it. I'm Ryan J. I'm bringing you day number six, my recap and notes. Oh, man, today was fire. Absolute fire. Uh, I don't know about you, but I loved it how Grant and Eric, like, they just meld. They just meld. It was enjoyable to watch. I like the banter between them. Uh, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. That was so cool. So cool. You can tell that they're friends outside of this. And that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Um, let's get into it. I'm going to try and keep this short. There's a lot to cover. I'm going to try and keep it short. It may go long, I don't know, but for consideration of your time and mine, let's just get into it. All right, uh, today we were talking about marketing, marketing, and there was a huge emphasis on how important marketing is, and Grant even said marketing is like number one, and everything else is pretty much to the wayside. You know, your sales, the quality of your product uh, went on about the importance of marketing. And I tend to agree. Because we're talking about marketing, yeah, I'm wearing my own shirt. Welcome to the answer. Well, what answer is that? I'm the ringleader of massive life-changing value. Bam, I got the hashtag on the back of my shirt and everything. But So, if we're talking about marketing... I'm going to take that opportunity to throw it out there. Hashtag massive life-changing value. Find me on all the social media with that hashtag. All right. So, um, marketing trumps sales, and uh, that should be your focus. Here was a writer downer with the uh, be seen and not heard or whatever. It's better to be seen and not heard. Well, it's kind of good to be seen and heard. Seen and heard. Then we were talking about like uh, getting internet trolls and getting bad feedback and getting bad publicity and bad, uh, bad negative comments. Well, if you're getting bad or negative comments, who cares? You know, talk about me when I'm good. Talk about me when I'm bad. You know what? You're talking about me. I like that. Just whatever it is, talk about me. Good, bad, indifferent. You love me? Give me the praise. You don't like me? <laughs> Bring it on. At least you're thinking and talking about me. So that's cool. Um, and quantity over quality. So just putting it out there. Putting out quantity. Quantity, quantity. And that's kind of like how I do it. This video is going to go to IG. It's also going to go to YouTube. It's going to be shared on my Facebook scrolly scroll scroll. So it's a repurposed video for all the social media platforms. So quantity, getting the message out there. Um, now let's get to Eric Worre the master trainer of network marketing. I was super excited to have this guy on for me, me personally, because I am involved in a network marketing business and he's like number one, number one. Guy knows what he's talking about. And plus he brought a wealth of information when it came to his toolbox of 25 things. And we only got the 17 but I'm going to run through them real quick. Um, number one, make a decision. Make a decision. All right. Well, if you're going to do the damn thing, make a rock solid decision and do it and go all in, all in on that decision. Number two, huge goal. Huge goal. Okay. Unbelievable goals. And I want to say that this was talked about two days ago when we were talking about goals and like not unrealistic because if it's within the uh, laws of nature and it doesn't define the law of gravity unless you're building planes or rocket ships or what have you, um, your goal is attainable. 
it might not happen when you want it, but you know, it'll happen if you don't quit. So huge goals. Um, with huge goals being said, uh, one of my goals that I came up with just yesterday is to have my la massive life-changing value platform run their own virtual summit in January. Or something like we're, we got going on that you've been paying attention to. I'm going to run my own. How I'm going to do it, I don't know. But you figure it out as you go along. Um, don't have a name for it. It might be the massive life-changing value global reach out. Might be the massive life-changing value world challenge. I'm not sure. If you're watching this and uh, you may want to be a speaker on that platform, get at me in my inbox or in the comments and we'll hash it out and see what value you can bring. I think it would be awesome exposure for you. Anyhow, we're going to uh, number three, declaring the goal. Kind of like what I just did right now. Once you have the goal, it's a huge goal, declare it, make it public. I just did that with the summit I'm going to hold in January. So tell people about it. You know, don't be a secret goal, goal keeper. Okay, here's my goal. I'm not going to tell anybody. Let people know. Then they can help hold you accountable. With that, number four, be more committed than anybody else. Well, you made the decision. You set the huge goal. It's really kind of riding on you. So, yeah, one would expect that you're the most committed in the room when it comes to your goal, whether it's your, because it is, your hopes, dreams, desires, it's all you. You can't expect anybody else to have that sort of passion towards it other than you. Number four, be more committed. Number five, make it fun. Heck yeah. You know, not everything has to be so serious, serious all the time. Have fun with it. Cool. Uh, number six, adventure. All right, it is an adventure. How am I going to do this? I don't know, but I'll figure it out when I get there. Uh, what exactly do I need to do, and is it going to be perfect? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're on an adventure, and actually, people like going on adventures. I use video and social media. Like, I'll check in once a week on Instagram on their live and just leave an update of my adventure for the week. The good, the bad, the progress, the, man, that sucked, could have done better at that. Or, hey, this is what I got going on. You know, adventure and, and sharing it. Um, number seven, bam, game plan it. All right, so you got your goal. You made the, the, the decision. You're the most committed guy in the room. Uh, you're making it fun. You told people about it. Plan it out. Yeah, there's got to be some sort of plan to it. But don't be surprised if you have to change the details of how that plan comes together because things... It, be prepared to change. And change is good. Just note, notice and realize when you're screwing up or what's not working and be able to make that decision on the fly and change. And that's what entrepreneurs do. They're ability to change and make decisions on the fly and be held accountable for it. And if it didn't work out, you know, be like, well, you know what? That didn't work. We're going to try this. Nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, that's 100% accept acceptable. Like, why would you want to keep beating something to death that doesn't work? Change it. Uh, campaign. All right, now this went a couple of different directions how I was listening to it, and I may not be clear on this. Campaign. So you're setting up a campaign, which kind of seemed like marketing. So you're marketing it to your customers. You're marketing it to their, the audience. If you have a team of people, you're marketing it to them. So you're selling 
selling your idea, selling the idea. That's why massive life-changing value is actually going to bring massive life-changing value to people during the virtual summit come January. Of course, if you want to be a part of that, maybe be a keynote speaker, get at me. We'll figure it out. So you're campaigning and you're talking up your idea and getting believers, getting the skeptics to become believers. That's my definition of what that campaign talk was about. Now we're on number nine. Bam, nine. Stories. Oh man, there's no better way to, to convey a message or get people into your campaign with, with stories. Uh, when you were a little kid, hopefully you were read bedtime stories. Me as a parent, I used to read bedtime stories to my daughter. Stories, people love stories. People love the story of Rocky, all right? You came from nothing, you built it up, you worked hard, and now you're the champ. You know, people love that type of story. They're, you're rooting for the underdog. Now, not all stories have to be underdog stories, but stories are a great way to get attention and convey your message. Firm believer in that. Um, the verbal commercial, okay? Verbal commercial. So that's like, well, it's not like, it is, all right? It's the jingles, the advertising jingles that constantly uh, replay in your mind when you think of McDonald's. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. What are you doing? You're loving it. Uh, what do you do if you wear Nikes? You're just doing it. So that type of verbal commercial. Be a problem solver. We talked about this yesterday. Talked about this yesterday. Solving problems. Um, you might have a wealth of information and know a whole bunch of stuff. But if you're not solving problems for the marketplace or providing value to the marketplace with a solution to your problem, whether even somebody doesn't know that they have a problem, you're using your stories to convey that they may have a problem. And this might be something they have to look into. And if you can solve that for them, solve their problem. Um, repetition, repetition, repetition. I don't know how many times I heard, we couldn't have even, you and I couldn't have counted all the times Grant Cardone was saying, grantcardone.com forward slash, um, there is like seven different forward slashes uh, promoted today. Kind of like, hey, I want to make sure that you're paying attention to Massive Life Changing Value Summit coming up in January repetition. Keep saying it. And here's another reason why you'd keep saying it. Um, your, your audience isn't like stagnant. Your audience is constantly changing, especially during social media, like the scrolly scroll scroll. Okay. Not the same person is seeing the same scroll. So you have to repeat your message over and over and over again, because your audience is more like a slow-moving train. It's not the same people every single time. Like, the people watching today's video are probably different than the people that watched me yesterday when I did a recap. Different people. You know, so repetition. Uh, recognition and celebration. This is big. Like, build up and celebrate the people that you work with build them up give them props hey i'm so i'm so excited for mary uh she just rank advanced for the first time in her network marketing company i'm so proud of her way to go bam you know or you know celebrating i'm so thankful for the knowledge that i got from uncle g today way to go thank you very much you know, just celebrating, giving thanks, being grateful. It, it's a cool thing to do and a nice thing to do. And let's all be nice, right? 
All right, uh, peer pressure, peer pressure. And I kind of tie this peer pressure into the fear of missing out and jumping on the bandwagon. Well, if my neighbor's doing it, maybe I should do it too. Well, if all these people are doing it, hmm, how come I'm not? Am I gonna miss out on something if I don't attend? Oh my gosh, what if I miss some, what if they, what if, what if, what if I miss this? The fear of missing out is very, very um, psychologically powerful. Nobody wants to miss out. Nobody wants to miss out. So peer pressure, fear of missing out, um, awesome, awesome tool. Competition is good. Yes, yes it is. Competition is good and it makes everybody better. Well, makes makes anybody with determination, drive, and willpower better because they want to crush the competition. The score should be, I, when I'm keeping score, it should be 100 to zero. I have 100, you have zero, I crushed you. Hey, no hard feelings, Psh, good game, but I won. Competition's good. And for the losers, they're gonna be better because you crushed them. Competition is good. All right, um, now we're at 16. Bam, bam, bam. 16, contest rewards for X amount of results. Okay, that ties into competition real closely, real closely. Uh, run a contest, okay. Since there's competition going on over here with my salespeople, all right, here's the contest. Uh, how many how many cold calls can you make in five minutes? Ready, go. That sort of deal. And you know, the winner at the end of five minutes gets whatever, whatever it is. All right, uh, where, uh, ah, and that's where we ended, 16. I didn't get 17, I may have to, I don't know, can you even Google Eric? worries 25 tips in his toolbox or tools in his toolbox i'm not sure today's homework um kind of kind of shaky on the uh kind of shaky on the deets of the homework but the decision here's what i got out of the homework the decision you have to make okay so probably back from eric worries number one decision well i made a decision I'm gonna hold my own virtual massive life-changing value global reach out or world challenge in January. And so stay tuned for that. That's my goal and my decision. I hope this was helpful. I hope it brought value. Man, today was fire. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and may ever the odds be in your favor.